how you are implementing disaster recovery in your project. Suppose there is something happened and some of your microservices have stopped working. So what do you have as a backup? Or if you haven't, then you can tell me the strategy by your knowledge. If you haven't planned yeah. into your project. So we don't have such thing, but uh, yeah, so in case any service is down, so we can first check the health check of the service. If service is not responding, then we can log into uh, the server application server and check for the issues. And as an alternative, immediate alternative, we can run another part of that service, try, try to run that service. What is default method? in java java 8 in particular so default means like uh, so if you overridden the particular interface default method what will happen like uh, the overridden one will call otherwise if you don't uh, overridden that one the interface default method it, it itself will call what is the purpose of uh, having default method in uh, interfaces after java 8 earlier there was no default yeah. method in java in interfaces but now after java yeah. 8 they added the feature of default method in interface so in any interface you can add default method yes yes so actually why they have introduced like a, a functional interface only can have one abstract method yeah. so to distinguish to make use of uh, uh, more functionality they have introduced that uh, default and the static methods in the particular interface functional interface yeah but uh, functional interface is different thing here in general in any interface you can add a default method be okay, it a functional yes, interface yes. or non-functional interface. So functional interface is something which have a single abstract method. So that abstract method defines the functionality yes, of this yes. interface that this particular interface is doing something. Is It is doing this particular job. It defines that. But default method you can use in any any interface, be it functional or not okay, non-functional. Okay. So this null pointer exception, is it a checked exception or unchecked exception? Yes, uh, this uh, null pointer exception, uh, yes, during the compile time, we'll get this null, uh, null pointer exception. During the compile time, are you sure? You mean, while no, no, compiling no, no, no. we will get this exception? Thing if you, uh, hello? Yeah, tell me. See, this null pointer exception, when we'll get, when you'll fetch some of the values from database, we'll get null values. Uh, uh, during uh, runtime, we'll get this as during runtime, the, the compile exception is the compile time exception are nothing but we will get some something the find not found exception which is we are known about this compile time exception. It it will throw on the find not found error like that. It is that will be considered as a compile time exception. Null point exception, other than some other class not found error exception. These are all the exception. So suppose you are getting a SQL exception while running your code. How do you handle that? So you said that if some SQL exception occurs while we are running the code, how yeah. we are going to end? Oh, okay. So SQL SQL exception might occur in the case like there might be a reason in that case why it would happen. Uh, some database related activity fails, your call fails, or something happens, then it would give an except SQL exception. This case, and in that case, I think uh, uh, since we have done the exception handling while returning a service call. Uh, so if database is down, if either if we do not want user to inform that like something is there, then in that case, uh, we we would give a proper message as per our requirement. Like we can say that uh, no data found or basically from that user come to know that no data found is coming. Or if that no data found along with that, you can pop up uh, some particular exception which would throw and say that your application is not connected or something. There are some issue with data, some sort of PCSA, which we call please contact system administrator or something. Have you done writing test cases? Yeah, we are using JUnit for controller classes only, but few services class we are trying to do it, but all the services class we are not achieving it. But uh, like we are using the Mockito actually. So Mockito what is the use of Mockito? Yeah, like injecting mock data, like instead of doing hard coded right, so Mockito will have so many uh, default mocks, right? So we can use that. Suppose you want to perform a transactional uh, operation. Do you understand uh, what is transactional operation? Transactional operation means uh, in Spring Boot, right? Transactional keyword we are using. Yeah, in, for creating in, in general, what is transaction? Transaction means you have to connect some database part, you have to some data, you can fetch, you can uh, modify like that the transaction you are doing. Yeah, okay. But the transaction is, it's a uh, certain steps you need to follow. So, oh, uh, while, while okay. uh, yeah, so while fetching the, like suppose you are doing some transaction from your app, bank app and you uh -huh. paid some amount. So, what will happen, uh -huh. this amount will reflect to your account as well. 
it will be deducted there and it will be added into the new person's account okay so okay. either these both things will happen or none of these things will happen so this is transaction so either all the steps will happen and if it fail in one step all the steps will be revoked so this okay. is transaction so in hibernate mm -hmm. you have a, or in jpa whatever you have used you huh? have a scenario to perform such operations which are transactional in behavior so how do you do that actually we are using configuration class okay and in that uh, entity bin factory is there right factory and transactional is there okay based on that data source we can create that um, transactional okay and it will create a bin based on that database and we are using spring data jpa so in repository classes we can add that transaction what is comparable and comparator which one you will use in which scenario so comparable interface which is having a method compare to while compare with Tur is having a compare method which we have to pass to it. So comparable is like is uh, is implemented in a class itself. Okay, and the comparator like suppose I have to uh, I have to sort or you know compare in by ID or by by name. So in that case, comparator will be, you know, getting used so that we can, you know, separate, we can create a separate uh, class or like compare by ID and we can implement that comparator interface and we can use it uh, in uh, in my my main, my, my class where I suppose customer is or employee is a class. So there I can use. So comparator is used when we have to compare by a specific. So if you want to give comparison logic by yourself, then comparator we can use specifically like suppose by id only or by name only like that i have to use suppose where exactly you will use enumeration can you give any example enums enumeration enum you call them in short enumeration where can you use they are constant i will give you the hint they are constant yes yes constant uh, they provide the some no, number to you like that. yeah so we create an enum class and okay. by default that is public static final so that means every variable created inside that will be a constant so we use them with the fixed things fixed things like suppose in our code we are using days okay sunday monday tuesday wednesday yes. we go for enums instead of creating a string and then using that again and again and that string uh, the code can be modified so instead of that we can go for enums what is parallel stream a parallel stream is like if you are like trying to do a collection dot parallel stream then you are trying to break up uh, that big stream into smaller smaller streams and then push the data simultaneously so that you will have like the collective data comes up so you have a lot of transactions and you do not do not want to do it sequentially one by one you want to do them parallelly like all at same go so you break it down into smaller streams and then you carry out the transactions so can you tell me any intermediate method while using stream name of you filter map flat maps these are the basic ones that you use for all the intermediate operations why do we store cookies if you visit any website you will get mm -hmm. the notification mm -hmm. that this website accept cookies so what do you mean by that it has a number of details like uh, expiry of that cookies also present over there ip address for uh, uh, the number of parameter are there and it is it is more to when we are accepting the cookie so that means they can uh, notify us whatever new contains or uh, if they have the new it is suppose i am taking the example of uh, uh, flipkart or amazon so when we are visiting to their site they are passing a cookie to our machine so it is in our browser uh, it is uh, saving uh, internally so next time they advancedly knows this is this is the person who is the interested for our product the particular product so number of things are mentioned means uh, suppose we are looking for the shoes that kind of cookie they are uh, saving to our machine or uh, they are taking reference from that cookie and they are showing according to that product so mainly it is used for the session yeah so okay, it is no. used for mainly those things also you you are saying but uh, i mean it is mainly used for the session handling to store the maintain the session so suppose in your project you have database server which is in some other country and in mm -hmm. some other time zone so how do you ensure how do you handle time zone in that case because suppose you are writing a query where you are trying to fetch mm -hmm. the rows between a particular time there, there may be a transaction time column in the uh, table and you want to fetch the rows which executed exactly between or saved between 2 to 3 pm so how do you ensure a time zone in that situation like basically we have things in the utc timestamp format so probably like you don't have 
to like deal with all those time offsets if you are using the UTC with the timestamps that you are inserting or doing anything, updating the database for or creating anything there. So probably that is something that probably avoids this. Then other like, can you set a default time zone for entire application? I think yes, like you can. Like entire like if you like have kind of a web application and you want to run it with some default time zone or like uh, some information probably I think you can do that. I haven't done that like basically we use those basic uh, UTC only okay. everywhere while updating and uh, getting those time zones. So I haven't faced that time zone difference issues like any and like in all my projects like it having UTC only so. Okay, so suppose in your application you have a Java application which uh, in which you need to run some batch services on some particular time, and your servers are in a different country, let's say UK or any country. So <laughs> what happen? How would you handle time zone in this scenario? Because suppose you will give in your batch job is the time you will give is uh, let's say 2 a.m. in the midnight your your batch job uh, will run and it will do some things like uh, compressing logging or anything it will do in the night so how would you handle time zone in that situation so a standardized like a time zone means like some some a standardization some api we are going to the use for that we are going to the provide the some like a date a date related or like a, you are going to get something like a time date like you are going to update that some like a get time or like you are going to some idc or like dc so that method we are going to the call on that means like a, that like a get uh, some something you are going to update something so at that time what happened like you are going to some offset you are going to set on that offset means like a, uh, there is some utc related or like a, some uh, idc related so that thing we are going to use like a UTC we are going to use so means like India or like a Nepal or so zone wise we are going to taking the some like a token of that which time zone we uh, our application is running so that time zone we are going to list that thing and we are going to the uh, provide that either like a UTC GMT or like a some Indian time time so that API we need to call this is a ready-made thing. I 